Welcome to Regua, Reserva Ecológica de Guapiatsu, an ecological reserve in Brazil where I am documenting wildlife for a science and social media project. My name is Bart Coppens and I am investigating the local species of invertebrates, and in particular the butterflies and moths. Now the natural reserve of Regua is quite big and there are many trails that I have already explored. But there is one particular place I have not yet seen. The waterfall. The waterfall trail or the green trail is a little bit heavy and it goes uphill. So I was waiting for a good day to walk the trail and discover the waterfall for myself. Waterfalls usually have good species of butterflies too, so let's get started. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, this is your favorite online entomologist, Bart Coppens, talking to you from a rainforest in Brazil. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, I went to Brazil to study insects. And what's even cooler is I am helping study butterflies and moths here in the local area, and the information that I collect about them will be used for their conservation and protection. I am doing this in, co in collaboration with Regua, Reserva Ecologica de Guapiatsu. I hope I pronounced that right, I don't speak Portuguese. But Regua is a conservation project started by farmers who saw that there was too many farmland here consuming the rainforest. And the Regua organization is devoted to buying local farmland and converting it back into forest. And they've been doing this for generations. And thanks to them, many agricultural pastures have been turned back into rainforest. They're also helping biologists and ecologists help study the local fauna, make a checklist of species, and see what kind of insects but also other wildlife lives here so it can be conserved for future generations. Now today I heard that here in the area is a lovely waterfall. If we follow this trail into the forest, it's said that if you keep going, you will end up with a waterfall. And I want to see this waterfall, you see. Waterfalls are usually good places for wildlife. So let's get started today in Brazil. This is interesting. So here we see a stone with some hay and it seems that some of the local butterflies have taken an interest in sitting on it. It seems as if they are congregating, isn't it? Why is this? Well, I've explained this behavior to you before several times, but the males of uh, many species of butterflies are attracted to salts and minerals. Uh, that's because butterflies, especially the males of butterflies, need salt in order to produce sperm. They need minerals in order to produce sperm. So when they sense there is an area with a lot of minerals, they will come lick them up. Why are they attracted to this particular spot? Well, I suspect that somebody has taken a piss here, to be honest. I know that sounds a little bit crass, but it's the truth. Butterflies are attracted to mineral-rich uh, solutions. This can be, for example, a, a stream along a river with mineral-rich rocks and sand. But it can also be urine. And a good way in Brazil to attract butterflies is to simply to take a piss somewhere. And if you wait, there's a chance that butterflies will join to drink it. Yep. Because they really crave those salts. Now, it wasn't me, guys, I promise. Um, although I wouldn't have been ashamed if it was me. But I could be wrong. Maybe something else happened here, I don't know, maybe the hay contains a lot of minerals here, who knows? It's cool. Well, it seems that I've just gotten started, but the uh, amount of butterflies here is pretty nice already. Now on this channel we study butterflies, so I'm gonna take some with my net to see what species they are. It should not be... It should not be hard to catch one, because they are just 
they stay in the area so if I miss they'll just come back and I get another chance to catch them don't worry I don't hurt the butterflies Alright, so this bright orange butterfly is probably one of the most common periods here in the area. The males like to chase each other. They're competitive. You often see them chasing after each other. It's a nice species, eh? The underside is a different shade. It's more fluorescent yellow with uh, cute red little spots. It looks like freckles. It's a nice species. I'm going to let you go. By the way, none of the butterflies are harmed in my videos. I release all of them, okay? And I'm helping here conserve the local species by investigating them and giving some awareness on YouTube as well. Bye bye. So don't worry. Now I saw some more species, some other periods, but I'm not going to check those out because I want to get to the waterfall and not hang out in the in the beginning of the trail in the starter area. So I seem I have this weird wrinkle on my face. Can you see it? I can see it when I'm filming myself. Weird. Maybe it's the stress, huh? Anyway. Let's get started. Uh, I'm not going to check out each species right now immediately. I want to get into the forest and then check out more carefully. Let's go. Ay, 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 ay. Nothing like a nice Brazilian rainforest. And the good news is the sun is out today. The rainforest can be very rainy. But. I think today is going to be a good day with good weather. Hmm. I'm curious what we're going to find. Wow, ladies and gentlemen, can you believe it? This stuff here behind me is bamboo. It's so big! Woo. Bamboo can be crazy big in the tropics.
This part of the trail to the waterfall is very dark. Can you see it? The trees almost block all the sunlight. But we still see some patches of sunlight here on the floor. Because of that, on this part of the trail, butterflies are more rare. However, that doesn't mean we should stop looking. There are many species of butterfly that actually prefer the dark forest and not open area with sun, such as owl butterflies or caligo, but also glass wings such as Greta Otto or Meganitis, the tiger wing butterflies, like the dark forest where there's not too much light. And sometimes they come to bask here in the sunny spot to get some sunlight and then they disappear into the dark forest again. What to do if you find a puma, or a mountain lion, or a cougar, whatever you prefer to call them. Puma con color, the mountain lion, is a big predatory cat that you can find here, if you're lucky, or unlucky if you think about it. I'm not very scared of seeing one. Uh, they rarely approach humans in this area, and when they do, most encounters don't result in violence. When a puma encounters a human, most of the time they choose to run away from the human. Pumas are wary of humans. They don't like to attack them. They don't see us really as prey. We're a little bit too big for them to eat. They prefer small prey like the capybaras. However, sometimes if the animal feels cornered, or if you're short, because they prefer shorter humans than taller ones, it's possible that they'll attack, especially if they have no place to go, if they feel cornered. Make sure to give the animal the space to leave, instead of cornering it on a trail or in a cave or whatever. I, I'm not that scared here, quite rare here. It's possible that we see one though, but uh, I don't think it's gonna happen. It is somewhat rare. But, you have to be careful, eh? It's a rainforest. You never know what you see. Remember when I mentioned dark forest butterflies? Here is one. Can you see it? Oh yes, this one is very big. This is an owl butterfly or a caligo. Now the host plants of these butterflies contain several types of, uh, I believe, palm trees, but in particular banana. They're very fond of banana. The caterpillars are often found on the genus Musa or banana. And it's a magnificent butterfly, they are very, very big. Let me zoom out and just show you how big it is. It's almost as big as the tree trunk is thick. And what's funny about Caligo owl butterflies is they prefer darkness. This is a butterfly that likes darkness. These butterflies, they mostly sit still during the day. Although sometimes they come to fruit and show a little bit of feeding activity during the day. Most of their activity, like pairing, egg laying, and also a lot of feeding happens in the evening when the sun is going down, or very early in the morning when the sun is just coming up. They like twilight. This makes them a crepuscular species. Crepuscular usually means a species that, feel, that is active in the twilight. You know, that, that small moment is like one hour per day, when it's not exactly daytime, but also not exactly nighttime, it's something in between day and night. And that's when you can see the owl butterflies flying. But during the day, it's easy to find them also in the forest. Let me see if I can catch it. Probably not, it's very difficult. I know it's sitting still, but these butterflies have very good eyes. It can see my movement. Maybe if I am very slow. Three, two. One, gotcha! Fuck, ah, oh, I missed it! <sighs> How did I miss that one? 
Anyway, I hope you enjoyed seeing it anyway. We got a good close up. It's a very big butterfly, very, very big. Maybe I'll find another one, then I'll try to catch it again. Here on the forest floor is some kind of decomposing fruit. I think it was a jackfruit. It's funny because it's producing a swarm of fruit flies. I don't know if you can even see it, but there's an insane amount of fruit flies here. Like there's literally like a thousand flies here attracted to the jackfruit. It's crazy. Makes sense. Fruit is coming from this tree. It's falling down and oh, and rotting and decomposing, attracting a lot of insects. That's just fantastic. I guess we'll have to go... Oh wait! It's possible to go around it, of course. I'm so smart. Wow! Those are some tree roots, eh? Damn! That was fun. But I'm really coming here for the waterfall. And I think I can hear the waterfall in the distance. Just a little bit more. Whew. This is good exercise for my body. I'm getting excited. I can hear the waterfall. Waterfalls are usually very good uh, hotspots for wildlife and insects, so I'm excited. You know what's great? I, I'm sweaty, but... I've been walking a lot today, I think it's already 8 kilometers. And I don't feel overheated. It feels like this is my third week in Brazil. And I'm finally getting used to the climate, you know? It's crazy how the human body can adapt. First weeks felt like I was suffocating and dying. But now it feels like I'm accustomed to this. Let's come. Uh-oh. Looks like I have to get my feet wet. At least we're getting close, right? Oh man, this is slippery. Here is a, oh sorry, here was an interesting species of butterfly. Let's hope it comes back. Oh, there it is. Oh, there it goes. It's related to the owl butterflies. Again, this is one of those species that likes a dark forest. Ah, it's an old one and it has a little bit of damage. Probably a bird or another predator tried to attack it and eat it. What a veteran! This butterfly is from the genus Dasiopthalma. And these are interesting because you can only see them in this part of Brazil. I believe the genus is here endemic to this area of uh, the Atlantic rainforest. Again, they're a dark forest species, so when there's little sunlight, Lots of tree cover is when you can see the Dasiopthalma fly. There are several species here in the area and the males of this species have sometimes a bright blue iridescence. Bye bye. These forest streams are extremely shallow but are teeming with life. 
I'm not even sure what this thing is that keeps moving in the water. It's some kind of aquatic beetle. Let's see what it is. It's so weird, huh? It strikes me as like a beetle or something. Come. It's gone. That was a weird thing, eh? Alright, it seems that for this part of the trail I'm expected to follow this little stream here. It's a cute little stream. And it's teeming with life. I see fish, I see tadpoles, I see beetles. Despite the fact it's so shallow. Check it out folks, that's either a little fish or a little tadpole, I'm not even sure. It looks like a tadpole. Yeah, I think it's a tadpole. Whoop. Now this, my friends, is a pretty unique looking frog or toad. Wow, an incredible species of frog or toad. I think I can actually identify this one. I think it's Proceratophis boai, or boai's frog. This common frog is found in primary and secondary forest on the forest edge and in degraded areas near forest. Boai's frog, po Proceratophis boai, feeds largely on insects and their larvae. Here is a science fact. An examination of the stomach contents, contents showed that beetles constitute 40% of its diet with grasshoppers and crickets or orthopterans constituting another 25%. Now I must be really close, guys. I should be careful. This is a dangerous area with slippery rocks. Ooh. Oh wow, look, a species of snake! But what species of snake is it? Hmm, I don't really know. I suspect it could be a species of Spilotus. But I could be entirely wrong here, of course. I'm a butterfly and moth expert, not a snake expert. I'm bad at identifying snakes, but if you know the species, please let me know in the comments. I'm very curious.
Oh my god. Wow. Whoa. Amazing. I had the feeling butterflies, that, that waterfalls are good places for butterflies. On warm days they like to come and drink here and find minerals. I guess my gut feeling was correct. Ladies and gentlemen, I think it's time to take my shirt off. Let me show you why. It's the salt for my sweat. The butterflies go crazy for my sweat. Wait for it.
All right, folks. I saw some cool butterflies there. Let me see if I can find some cool insects.
There's these fish in the water and they were biting my feet. I'm not kidding. <laughs> I tried to catch some of them for you, but they were too fast. All right, so I am muting the sound for a moment because the waterfall is too loud. But these were the fish that were nibbling my feet. I know I wasn't crazy. I felt fish biting my toes. If anyone watches this right now and can recognize this species of fish, then please let me know in the comments. I don't know the species. I'm not a fish expert, but I'm very curious to know what species were biting my toes today. Thank you. It's a fascinating animal. Alright fish, next time please don't eat my toes again, that privilege is only reserved for people who subscribe to my OnlyFans, okay? Ciao!
All right, people. It's getting dark and cloudy. I think I'm going to go back. Hope you enjoy it. Don't leave the video yet. We still have some uh, way to walk back home. But it was great, huh? And from this point I am going back. But I still have to walk like 10 kilometers. So uh, the video is far from over. But um, it's getting dark and cloudy. That's bad for butterflies. And I'm trying to get back home before the real bad storm begins. Ooh. Now this is what the trails here look like. So you have to be careful. I mean, it's barely even a road. It's littered with slippery rocks. But in this part of the forest we can see cool, cool butterflies too sometimes. Let's see. Such a dense forest, huh? When I make videos in the Netherlands you don't get forests like this. It's kind of a shame. But even here in Brazil the forest is disappearing. That's why I'm here, to promote Regua. Because they actually conserve the forest. This is uh, also an area that is conserved by Regua. So, I'm happy that um, it allows my channel to make a difference, you know. Because my stay here, not only am I promoting it on social media, but of course I also paid to be here and those funds are going to be used for reforestation too. Plus I'm helping them with butterfly and moth research. So that's three things I'm contributing also. Just look at the beautiful forest. It goes on and on and on. It's endless. And there are so many species in it. It's crazy. It is really crazy. Not all the plants here in Brazil are very nice. Look at those spines. Oy, 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 oy. Have to be careful here if you run through the bushes because you just may hurt yourself. Seems to be some kind of a palm tree. Man, it has weapons. Here's something interesting. Satirid butterfly. Quite large one. Aha, it's you again. I think it's some kind of water beetle. Can you even see it? It's moving that fast. How insane. Can you see this thing just racing, racing? around here in the stream that's a predatory beetle and i suppose it's hunting stuff like tadpoles fish whatever it can grab really whatever moves it's a meat eater a carnivore so odd all right ladies and gentlemen so i did actually just find something very curious and fascinating a mutilidae what is a mutilidae? Well, they're basically wingless wasps. They kind of resemble ants, but they're a, a type of ground-dwelling um, wasp without wings. And they are often very brightly colored because their sting is said to hurt like hell. Therefore, we're not going to handle it. We're just going to film it and then release it. Wow, it is crazy. I believe this to be a velvet ant, and I think it's Hoplomutila spinosa. It's said to have an incredibly painful sting, so I'm trying to be careful here. The Mutilidae are a family of more than 7000 species of wasps, whose wingless females resemble large hairy ants. Their common name velvet ant refers to their dense pile of hair, which most for most species is bright scarlet or orange but can also be black white silver or gold 
Their bright colors serve as aposematic signals. They are known to have extremely painful stings. Adult females are generally parasitoids of immature stages of other Hymenoptera. When inside a host nest, they are known to drink hemolymph, hemolymph from the host larva or prepupa. Adult males, on the other hand, generally feed on nectar. All mutilidae are soli solitary parasitoid wasps that mostly attack mature larvae or pupa of other solitary hymenoptera. However, velvet ants have also been observed targeting non-feeding stages of dipterans, coleopterans, lepidopterans, blattodea, and even some eusocial hymenopterans. How very interesting. Just saw something cool guys, a butterfly that you can only see here in this part of Brazil. Let me show you. And here we have a butterfly that's endemic to this part of Brazil. It's not particularly flashy and colorful, but it has the nice copper iridescence I suppose. It's a Pirella species. These fly in the heart of the forest on sunny spots. But surrounded in the dark forest, as you can see. Just like all butterflies and morphos and caligo and the dasyoptalma and more. I'm still happy to see it this close up. It's a nice butterfly, even though I know it's not like um, mega colorful. But at the same time, it's only something that you can see in this uh, exact part of the world. So not many people will get the opportunity to see this species, but I do. And documenting something endemic to this area, of course, is quite in my interest. Because I probably don't get a chance to ever film this butterfly again, unless I return here, that is. It does seem to like basking in the sun. It's just relaxing here on a leaf. Now this is a special butterfly, Pirella Keith Brownie. Why is it special? Because it's endemic to the Atlantic rainforest. You can't see it anywhere else. To see this butterfly, you have to be in this part of Brazil. And here's the large bamboo. So. This is pretty much the part where we started. This is the part where we finish almost. However, I have a little surprise for you. I have to walk a lot in the countryside. So soon I'm about to exit the rainforest. No more rainforest, but Brazilian countryside. And the Brazilian countryside it can have different animals than the rainforest. It can have different species of butterflies. So take a good look at this cool forest. Soon there's going to be plantations and pastures. But in these places you can see cool butterflies and birds too. If you are lucky that is. So let's find out if we can see something. Oh my god ladies and gentlemen. This is quite something. Take a look. Let's just take you off. All right. I've seen through your camouflage. Whoa! Yo! 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 Wow, ladies and gentlemen, wow, now this is quite a caterpillar, isn't it? Magnificent, look at how large it is, it has a dragon head, that is so cool, and I just found it on a banana tree, wow, look at those amazing colors. 
Fantastic! I found a dragon! This is one of the coolest caterpillars I've found so far in Brazil. And I've only been here for two weeks. I'm definitely going to rear it and see what kind of butterfly it turns into. I think I already know, I have a suspicion. But let's keep it a surprise for the sake of my viewers. So you guys will be surprised with the awesome butterfly. Wow! Is that not just simply amazing, huh? So incredible! Wow! Look at that! Wow! Amazing! I for one cannot wait to see what butterfly you're going to turn into. Fantastic, what a beauty. Look at those blue stripes, that's the coolest part, wow. Alright, let's take you home in a container. I'm going to raise you as my child. So yes, these are banana trees. And if you see banana trees in Brazil, Check them out for cool caterpillars, because there can be awesome species on it, man. Man, if you've seen these things once, you just start recognizing them everywhere. Here you go. You're mine now, little one. Hey, 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 hey. Yo! I have many of them now. I found four. Okay, that's enough. Let's go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we left the rainforest. I've been walking all morning, but we still have a long way to go through the countryside. So if you guys uh, start, keep watching, I'm going to show you the, the Brazilian typical uh, rural countryside. And it's nice. It has some nice stuff in it, you know. There's different species that prefer the open landscape of agriculture and human development and the ones that you see in a dense rainforest. So uh, let's check that out. Eh? That's funny, huh? How we just went from like rainforest to empty pastures here behind me. Now let me tell you some more about Brazil because I have some energy left today. Why not? See this field here behind me? The stuff that they are growing here is uh, called manioc. But if you're from the west, you probably know it as cassava. Cassava. I believe um, the plant is not eaten, but the root is. And it can be baked, fried. It has like this very starchy root. Sometimes they even make chips of it. I've had cassava chips here. Uh, it's pretty good. It's almost like potato chips. They even say that cassava is more nutritious than potato, so who knows? Maybe they're onto something. It's from the Euphorbiaceae or the spurge family. So who knew that, um, that spurges can be tasty on some occasions? This is a very popular crop here. Now, these manioc or cassava fields can sometimes be a refuge for some types of wildlife, such as this little owlet here. 
Can we see it? Can we zoom in? Where's the owl? Oh, there it is. Here's the owl. Sometimes you'll see these small birds of prey, such as these owlet, using the size of the field as a hideout. Now this I believe to be the burrowing owl, Athene cunicularia. They nest and roost in burrows, such as those excavated by prairie dogs. Unlike most owls, burrowing owls are often active during the day, although they avoid the midday heat. Although like many other kinds of owls, burrowing owls still do most of their hunting from dusk to dawn, when they can use night vision and hearing to their advantage. Living in open grasslands as opposed to forest, the burrowing owl has developed longer legs that enable it to sprint as well as fly when hunting. Of course, apart from cassava fields, there's cows. Very commonly here, pastures consist of cows, cattle farming. Brazilian cows look very different from the ones in my country. And they also seem to be very curious. Huh? Hello there, cows. I'm afraid that most of you are going to turn into beef. Yeah, that's right. And then there's these white herons that always follow the cows. See them? I think they like to pick off insects and other small animals that uh, try to flee from the cows in order not to get trampled. Funny, eh? This is a nice landscape, even though it's agricultural. Hmm, it's starting to rain a little. I hope it's just going to be a little rain then, and not lots of it. That would be great. Those clouds do look kind of sus. Hmm. Here's a cute historical little chapel. I know it doesn't look that way, but it's still being used. Mainly for funerals. This thought was interesting to show you. Slowly I'm going back home and the agricultural fields are replacing the forests. But at least there are school birds in them, like the Cara Cara. Well that's the end of this trip folks, but don't leave yet. 
I'm going home right now and ending the video, but we uh, left the forest so I don't have much more nature to show you today. But I do like to end the video with a special message about reforestation that I really want you to hear. Because I care about the conservation of the environment and my channel supports the conservation of the environment and the rainforest. The Atlantic rainforest in Brazil is one of the most deforested rainforests in the world. The future of this rainforest is uncertain, however, and this is why I came to Brazil to help. Reforestation is the answer to deforestation. Here at Regua we have a massive tree nursery that grows thousands of native trees and plants. And these will be planted in deforested areas such as farmland. And slowly this will help to restore the Atlantic rainforest. It's a long process, but that means that Regua is contributing to the restoration of the rainforest that is constantly being lost. And that, my friends, is a noble pursuit. Look at that. Trees are essential for life. Trees capture the nutrients in the soil. But more importantly, plants, their roots, and the humus layer they leave behind on the soil capture fresh water. In tropical places around the world where there is reforestation, you will see shortages of water, shortages of food, depletion of the soil, erosion and more terrible things happening. For the people of Brazil it's very important to preserve these rainforests for the future. But things are unfortunately not looking good right now. And this is why I came all the way to Brazil to help. To help with Regua's conservation project because I have faith in it. We need trees, we need forest cover. Trees feed us, give us something to drink and regulate the environment. Last but not least ladies and gentlemen, not only Regua needs your help, I need your help too. My channel contributes to conservation and reforestation efforts like Regua. That's why I'm working here currently, to help. But my YouTube channel is completely and utterly demonetized by YouTube. That means that when I make a video, I don't get a single dollar for it in return. YouTube refuses to tell me why I am demonetized. And therefore I have resorted to crowdfunding. This whole trip to Brazil, including my residence here, the flight tickets, the equipment that I need, was all paid for by my fans. I'm not saying this to brag or show off. I know that I'm in a very privileged position. However, without you guys helping me, this video would not exist and none of this would be possible. And I would not be able to contribute to conservation and reforestation of the rainforest. I really want my YouTube channel to have a positive impact on the environment and therefore I will travel the world to help out and give awareness to on social media several wildlife conservation and reforestation projects. But I can't do it without your help because what I do is expensive. I cannot travel the world, I cannot show you these places without the financial donations and contributions of my fans and viewers. So if you like my channel and if you like the show, please consider um, donating to us or sp sponsoring us on a platform like Patreon or PayPal. The links are available in the description and there you can read how to do it. Of course, not contributing doesn't make you less of a viewer. I appreciate all your viewership all your likes, all your comments, you don't have to give me anything unless you are willing and able to. However, with the help of my viewers, I can travel the world, show you the coolest insects, the coolest nature, give awareness for their conservation in the future, and this will help the environment. 
it's a win-win situation and you will get to see awesome videos hope to see you next time